Hey guys! Yesterday my sister sent me a video about life of a programmer and she was asking me, is it really true what they are showing there? And I thought that we could watch it together with you. Let's start! Okay, I want to talk a little bit about what it's like to be a programmer, software developer. Um, I've been a developer since about 1999, so it's coming on 17 years. Okay, I haven't been working as a software for 18, 17, 20 years. I have been working for like a bit less than five years, almost five years. So we might have a different opinion with him, but let's see. I've worked mainly in the St. Louis, Missouri area, Chicago, even Atlanta. I've worked as a consultant. I've worked as a full-time employee. I've worked as a contractor. Different times for different needs. Um, there's so much to tell you about being a programmer that I'm going to have to break this up into a series because what's going to kill me is I'm going to tell you some things in this video and then later I'm going to be like, man, I should have said that. I should have said that. So this is just going to be step one what it's like to be a programmer, what the work is like, do you want to do it? I'm going to give you some food for thought and you need to really think long and hard about whether you want to do it or if your personality type fits it. Because in retrospect, I wish I had picked something maybe with a little more activity to it. That's not my case. I am completely fine with what I'm doing and um... I am really happy that I picked this profession. Can't imagine myself doing anything else. Because one thing I, that one of the most biggest things that I first realized, first job right out of college, is that it is a sitting job. And I know that sounds obvious, but when you, no one really tells you that and no one prepares you for that until you get your first job. But what do you expect? Like you are sitting in front of your PC basically all day and programming is very similar to any kind of sitting job, office job. And when he's saying that no one prepares you for that, you should probably be able to spot it yourself that you have to sit all day. But I think I'm wrong here because you can buy a standing desk and stand all day instead of <laughs> sit. And then they say, here's your cubicle. Sit down. It's eight o'clock. You can leave at five. And it, that's when it hits you. Oh my God, I just signed up for a desk job, which is not just one or two or three hours, but it's eight hours a day, five, to five times a week. I kind of disagree a bit here. It depends on what path you pick, because if you want to be a freelancer, then you can pick your own schedule and you don't have to go to the office. If you pick the path where you work for someone and you have a job from nine until five, then it's pretty obvious that you will sit in a cubicle and... Um, do your job and then after five you will leave home. Now, there's ways to combat that and there's ways to deal with that and you get used to it. I do a lot, I get up a lot. I get up and walk at least once an hour. Um, it's good for your eyes and I'm gonna talk about this in other videos too, but I always get up and I move around and it's not healthy to sit for that long and it's not healthy for your mind or your eyes. So anyway, it, you can manage it, that's my point. But you need to realize before you become a programmer, this is a sitting job and there's lots and lots of sitting, which makes it also easy to gain weight. And at the beginning of your career, you might also sit more than you expect because when you get home after work, you try to study, learn new stuff that you saw at work, you try to catch up with your job. And um, sometimes you can sit like for 12 hours or 14 hours. That was my case. A lot of people get into it for the money. And at first too, when I was in college, I, had, I was making zero. So when I first heard that you can make 30, 40,000 right out of college, I was like, wow, sign me up. You know, 30,000 sounded like a lot back then. And it was, if you manage your money right. And so um, this, this is a big mistake to pick it for the money. I totally agree with him here because you shouldn't pick your job only because of money. If you hate what you are doing and you force yourself to do it only because of money that you won't last very long. 
you will quit and eventually change to something else that you will like. Or you will be struggling the rest of your life, which is not a good choice. Um, you need to make sure you like what you're doing, first of all. It is programming. You are going to be solving problems. And we, I'm going to get into that too, but I just wanted to say right off the bat, if you're doing it just for the money, but you kind of don't like it, you kind of don't like to figure out problems all day, I'm going to tell you, you need to maybe think about doing something else or doing it, just doing it on the side. Completely agree here that the main key for the programmer is that he likes to solve problems. He likes to build this sequence of events that he needs to complete in order to solve this problem, find different paths. And like when he sees a problem, he kind of sees it as a challenge. Okay. <laughs> I feel like sometimes he sounds pretty depressing. <laughs> so what kind of things does it take to be a good programmer? All right. Here's the first problem I had in college. I thought you had to have a lot of math, mathematics. And I'm gonna get, I can give a big long speech about this. Do you need to know math to be a programmer? And the answer is no. You don't need to be a math scientist to do programming. They're actually quite different things. Programming is logic. Yes, uh, he's right that you don't have to know math and like you don't have to have deep knowledge in math. But you can still be a programmer. You can still write code, but your application has some kind of connection to math or it's financial application or you're doing AI or machine learning. And if you know math, it will, will give you a big advantage. It's not like you require math to be a programmer but you are a better programmer if you know math. Another thing you need to think about is a lot of the, they didn't ever told me in college how sort of strict or the guidelines of your programming are very, they're very strict in general. And I'm talking about big corporations. I'm not talking about startups and places that are very laid back, Silicon Valley. I'm talking about your average big corporation, which that's where I worked. I worked in the big corporations. Um, so what, what it is and what the way I pictured it, I pictured it kind of like the movies, like things would be different and changing and you'd be, I thought there'd be a lot more movement and a lot more creativity. The reality though, is that every place I went looked almost exactly the same. Every place looked the same. They all had cubicle, 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 every place worked at probably 40 different companies as a consultant, as a contractor, every one of them. Okay, um, as far as I know, he's from the US and I am from Denmark, which is Europe. And um, I kind of agree a bit with him because uh, here in Copenhagen, we also have a lot of American companies and uh, a lot of them look the same. The structure of the company, the look of the offices, but if you talk about Danish companies, then they try to make offices looking more like home. So the employees, when they come to the office, they feel more comfortable and they don't really feel that it's their job. They just home. Pretty chilled. I was working in the company where you could bring your dogs with you, your pets, if you can't leave them alone. So it's pretty chilled here. But it, it also differs from company to company you wouldn't know one business to the next what they even do because they all look the same on the inside. It's not like if you work for a rental car company, which I did. I worked for Dollar Rent-A-Car. It's not like you knew that because you you went to the building and it had cubicles. If you work for insurance, which I did, you go in the building and it has cubicles. So you don't, you're so disconnected from the business that you don't even know what they do half the time. So you go into the business and they isolate what you do down to very narrow specifics. So 99% of the time you have no idea what the company does. You're just working on this one little piece that somebody else gave you, especially as a contractor. I think he's mostly talking about his own experience working as a contractor. But uh, yeah, it's kind of true that if you are a contractor or a freelancer who is hired to do some kind of, of job, specific job, 
then you won't have a time to talk to business people or to get like deep understanding of what is this software is for and what it's supposed to do because you are hired for some specific period of time and you have to be done with your job and just leave. If you want to be connected to business people or you want to contribute with some ideas into what functionality should be implemented in the software that you're working on, then I think you should be a full-time employee with unlimited uh, contract time. And then the, the other thing I realized is everything I built, everything is just, it's the, kind of the same over and over and over. It's a form, users enter data into the form, the form gets, gets some logic built into it, coding, and it goes into a database. And then they write reports on it. That's 99% of everything you're ever going to do. Form, logic, database, reports. I think this is very wrong. Um, because not like Ron, but maybe he just, he's talking about his own experience and he still tries to generalize it for all developers. But if you are doing the same input every time and you hope that next time with the same input, you will have a different output, that's kind of a bit wrong because if you want to change something, then you take a different approach. If you want to do a different job, then you either go to a different type of companies or in your spare time, you learn a new skill. And then next time you apply for a job, you will be doing a job with this new skill. What it's like to work as a programmer, usually <coughs> what I didn't, excuse me, what I didn't know was how standardized it was. I, I thought there'd be a lot more creativity. You can embrace your creativity if you are a programmer. You can be, you can build some cool software with some crazy UI or with some crazy logic. You can be a game developer. That's like a place for a lot of creativity. You can build an AI that also requires creativity. So I don't think I can agree with this statement that he said. Usually you're given so much so much rules and everything that you build something that's advanced planned in advance and so you have to be okay with that so that was a nice video but i still think that it was a bit uh, too scary for a new person uh, who tries to learn programming and maybe a bit uh, depressing programming is a lot of fun and a lot of creativity and if you don't like the place where you're working, or you think it's boring or you are doing the same job or you don't contribute, you think you like you're not allowed to contribute as much as you can, then you should change uh, the company that you work for. Programming is fun. Come on, guys. It's like really cool. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Everything depends on you, on what you want. And don't be afraid to make changes and try something new. Thanks for watching me, guys. Please consider to subscribe, give me a like, see you in the next one.